Tesla, so it's really it's like calling somebody and telling them they're on speaker. <laughs> 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 we have, have Laura talk again. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Laura, can you hear us? We can hear you now, Laura. So we took we took roll call and we approved the minutes. I saw. I was here. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
that consultant will install the lights, any plumbing repairs, that type of stuff. That won't fall into RAM's purview. And then, like the signage and stuff, that's all part of that wayfinding package that the city has out right now. And that'll be done by a separate contractor. So the work is still going to happen. It's just not happening by RAM construction. RAM's is kind of more just the concrete and the painting. Speaking of wayfinding, they, there, there used to be a sign um, on um, uh, Maple um, Eastbound, West, Westbound, I'm sorry, um, uh, that directed uh, uh, take a right on Pierce towards the uh, parking structure. It's missing. A left Westbound on Maple, Pierce. hanging a left on Pierce. Hang a right on, on Pierce. No. If you're westbound on Maple, there is no right turn on Pierce. I'm, I'm, I'm coming directions next. Eastbound. Eastbound. Yeah, Got that it. makes sense. Yeah. Okay, eastbound on Maple? Yeah, eastbound Maple. It was there for a while, then it Talking about this, the green P yeah. with an arrow? Okay. Parking arrow. I will see what we can find. Thank you. Yep. Didn't the parking committees sometimes participate in, um, you know, uh, recommending contractors to the uh, city commission? Um, I mean, if they can, I, I'm yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not sure if they had in the past. Yeah. Um, a lot of the stuff, you know, we're just trying to keep the ball rolling. So. Um, in, I, we can definitely bring it in, but I think a lot of times it's been under, I've been under the impression that in the essence of keeping things going, since it has to go to the commission, that if it's an element of time um, to just present it to the commission. But if if the timing works out to bring it here, then there's no reason not to. But if it's, hey, you can get this to a commission meeting and timing is of the essence, then present it to the commission. Uh, lot 5 repaving, I was actually just giving her an update. Um, again, this is lot 5, which is the surface lot behind the North Old Woodward Garage that is getting repaving. Right now, we're, it was supposed to happen in May. They got delayed um, because the paving company was playing catch up from the rain they got in May. Um, so they're currently on track for a uh, mid-June, so I would expect in the next two weeks that lot will be repaved. And then the island, the new island over at North Old Woodward Garage has been installed. So if anybody who uses the North Old Woodward Garage, if you enter off of Old Woodward, you get to where the parking equipment is. There's a brand new concrete island there. Um, it looks really good, except for there's crappy asphalt on every side of it. So um, when the lot gets repaved, that driveway will, will get repaved as well. So it'll be a nice clean surface everywhere. Yeah, and the island has a, now has a light where there previously was not a light there. Um, there now is new an LED light right above <coughs> the parking equipment. So when people pull in, it's actually the alley is actually lit up now, whereas previously it was dark. Okay. Any questions on North Old Woodward? Um, miscellaneous communications. So. So there were, <clears throat> so if you <clears throat> scroll down to miscellaneous communication, um, I have the updated, the, uh, the, I guess it's just the ongoing um, showing the revenue of the meters month over month. Uh, included in there the percentage total of the revenue, so you can see which, which total is cash or how much cash makes up of our revenue of meters, how much is credit card, and how much is park mobile. Um, this, it's just a good document to show you the trends. Um, I hadn't previously put in the percentages, and I thought that was actually a good, a good uh, statistic to show. Um, it, you know, the trend has been showing that Park Mobile is the most common way that people have been paying. That is, that has been a I don't want to say a recent trend, but pretty much a trend since I've started here. But it sounds like that's relatively newer. It used to be cash, and then slowly credit card. Now it just seems like it's 
it's Park Mobile's really taken over, right. which is kind of coincides with technology, I guess you would say. So for April, you're saying they're 45 percent of the revenue for was April. was made up by Park Mobile, correct? Do they take a did they take a percentage of that? Park Mobile for they take transaction fees. So if the customer pays a buck, they actually, so if the fee for the meter is a buck, let's say they get a buck 48. Buck 48? Yep, so there's a 48 cent transaction fee. <laughs> oh, but if it's $3, it's still 48 cents. Correct. So if it's a dollar, they get roughly half of it. Hmm? No, they get an addition, they get more. It's 48 like, cents in addition to every transaction. Yeah. Right. That's how but they I make mean, their money. But what we're paying them is half of that dollar. No, no the, the Parker the, pays it. The, the Parker the pays it, not the city. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And what about credit cards? No, there's... No. The city pays credit card fees. The <clears throat> city pays credit card fees, and the Parker, if you will, or the right. customer... Because Park Mobile absorbs the credit card fees, because... They're transacting with Park Mobile. So Park Mobile absorbs the credit card fees. They don't bill those back to us. So that's why they charge the, I mean, obviously they they try to make back their credit card fees and then obviously they're making money. Oh, on they're top making of it. money. I mean, if it's a buck, but it could be $2, still 48 cents a transaction. But the Parker customer, whatever they're defined as, knows that. Correct. How do they know that? I didn't know that. Because they just, it says when you actually check out, it will say that parking fee and then the charge for parking. Okay. Mobile. I don't use it, so. It doesn't, do you have a chance at that point to not use it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could. You could decline it and meter. just pay with coins or yeah, pay with okay. credit card. Um, breakdown of revenue structure, we didn't change anything there. Um, so, I guess the part after this is what I wanted to show everyone. Um, so there was a request to kind of see what are some of the reports that um, that our new parking system can offer. Um, it's a little hard to read, I guess I would say. Um, you can hit the plus on your yeah. screen if you want to blow it up a little bit. Yeah. Even then, it's a little a little bit harder when you are probably looking at it on your personal computer, but now that it's converted to a PDF, it's a little bit harder. But so there's some different occupancy reports we can we can now start to pull. Um, so uh, previously, we had shown you like a table that just said, hey, the Chester garage is 46% full, the Peabody garage is 70% full, and it was really cut and dry. Um, so we can either continue to try to do that where we give you these summary numbers or we can try to start to provide you some of these newer reports which can show you, um, as you can see here, it breaks it down between monthly, transient, um, and then it can summarize the total percentage. And then across the top, the different columns, you'll see it says 1 through 24. Those are the hours of the day. So you can kind of see what is you know, how full these garages are and what the makeup is at the different times of day. So I guess it really kind of comes down to is how much detail does everybody want to see. Uh, we can do this by day or we can do this by month. So I think right here we selected the month of April. You know, the parking equipment was first installed at Chester first and by the time we were done, it was mid, mid to late March. So April was the first month we had all the parking equipment at all five garages. Um, so April, May, we could show we could show everyone. Here's the the occupancy by the whole month period. Um, we can obviously break this down by the garage specifically, by day specifically. Um, so that's the good thing with it. Um, the bad thing is, I guess it just you know there's a lot of data here, so it's kind of just how do we want to see it? How does you know, how do you want to see it? You know, I guess we could we could break it down by day, and then, you know, you'd have a lot of different pages, and then also have a summary page. I guess it's just really, <laughs> really, what are we looking for? But we got a couple of questions. I see some on the percentage over 100%. Correct. So, again, these are by hour. So, 
So like take the, I think you're looking at the Pierce Garage, uh, which one was it? So, uh, so yeah, Pierce yeah. It just pops yeah, up. Yeah, so it's by hour, so obviously you have turnover within the hour. So you have a lot of cars leave, and then you have more cars continue going. So if you have hours where there's significant turnover, that's why the percentage is, is getting higher. You're saying because does that represent a line to get out then? I mean, how, how do you get over 100%? Does it have like a calculated number of spaces associated with right. it? And so if you have 500 spaces and you have 500 cars in, but more are pulling in, one more are pulling out, I guess it, if it's calculating. I mean, I would just be interested yeah. in yeah, no, how I, you get over that. I mean, the system, you know, it's just what that, and, and then the bigger issue, this is what we're getting to, is this is, you, you refer to this as data. So the, the key that you want to get from all this is information. So you're looking for, so when you get this, you're like, wow, something came up here. This is a bunch of data, but what will be really good, and it takes time to do this. I'm not saying it should be done this month. It might take the rest of the, might take two, three, four, five months where you start to look at trends and you start to see something. Yeah. So data turns <clears throat> into information. Yeah. And then you and that's just a, a, like... April is the first month we had all five right. garages, so we kind of have to establish what is the new, what is the new normal from these percentages. So if you went through and you kind of compared these some of the old basic percentages we'd give you, they're not necessarily going to be <clears throat> the same. So I think we need to establish what is the new normal on these, and to your yeah. point, show the month over month and say, okay, does this Chester is at this now? The next month it's at this. Okay, does it, do those make sense? Is there a dramatic shift? Why? And if there is a dramatic shift, why is it? Was business actually that high, right. or is there is there an error somewhere? But well, after after you get data, then you get information, then you get then you get effective decisions. Yeah. So you just kind of <clears throat> go down that that road, and we're just this to me is at the very very beginning of it, which is great, and you start to and that's what helps you. <clears throat> run your department more effectively. So you go from data, which we have a lot here, to you start to say there's some information, and that allows us to make effective decisions. So this is great. You just we just got to kind of instead of just throwing this out and looking at it, you just you got to move sure. down that that data information effective decision wisdom mm. path. Finally, you get. You know, and then you get this super efficient parking system going because you have yep. these reports that help you manage more effectively. Yep. No, I agree. But it would be good. I'm just a, a data guy or whatever, but to, to understand what what over 100% means. Does that mean there's a there's a queue somewhere? Does it mean that, like we were saying earlier, maybe the number is not right in the system or whatever? I would just be curious how you get there. And if that represents a cue, then you definitely understand that what that is. Well, data has to be accurate to be meaningful. Right, right? exactly. <laughs> so that that's this is data. I'm looking for the information. 108.41, you know, what does that mean? What's the information on that? Is that a cue or is that a wrong number or whatever? I think it's really important to have this data. Um, I, I kind of wish we'd had it last month, only because, you know, we voted to um, increase the number of passes in the Pier Street Garage by 50, um, and now we're seeing numbers that at lunchtime, you know, it's it's over 100% capacity, um, which I know I sound like a broken record because every time we have a meeting on these garages I mention this, mm -hmm. um, but, like, I think if you have, if you're paying for a monthly parking pass, you should at all times be able to find a spot in those garages. Like I think I agree. It's, it, no. it's unfair to... If, if you have a parking pass, yeah. it does not guarantee, guarantee you it. a parking spot. <laughs> but that doesn't you know, mean it that's, shouldn't. That's, <laughs> right, that does, I agree. It doesn't mean it shouldn't. I, I just think that... I mean, that, that, that's a, that's a, when they give you your parking yeah. pass, they tell you it does not guarantee you a parking spot. It, and, okay. And, and, and logically, you would think it should. Yeah. Right? But it it doesn't. Okay. I mean, because you can't control the transients. Right. I mean, I remember. And that's one. true. I agree. But I mean, I think you know, 
going forward, if we are to, you know, increase these allocations of parking passes again, we will need to very carefully assess this data because I, while I understand maybe yes, there is that disclaimer, I think as a committee and, you know, mm -hmm. we are serving constituents and some of those constituents are people who park in these garages and I, I think we're going to get a lot of blowback if people are we, not able to find We them. operate to hold spaces for monthlies if we're getting close to capacity. For example, yeah. Friday okay. with the carnival, right. okay. we were close to capacity at Pierce and we did shut down two transients but we were not quote unquote full because we were holding spaces for monthly parkers because you know it's lunchtime, there's turnover, right. people yeah. left, they come back. So to okay. your point, we are sensitive to that fact okay. because you, the system can shut down two transients, meaning you can't pay to park, right. but your monthly badge will work. Right. Um, and again, specific to like Friday, we had people out at the Pierce entrance and at the Brown Street entrance to the Pierce garage mm -hmm. screening. So if you're a monthly pass holder, we let you in. Okay. If you're a transient, we're sending you over to Peabody or we're sending you over to Chester. Yeah, that's so, yeah. I'm just saying going forward, I think we should it's yeah. great no, to have I, this data. You're paying for your parking. You if we're going to be, be making it. these decisions, you know, I'd like to be fully informed. Yeah. So that it's great. I think it's one thing if awesome. the entire systems, full, uh, if the entire yeah. systems fold like it was pre-COVID, but you know, Peabody's still no, filling totally periodically agree, right? at eleven o'clock to one o'clock. Right. Pierce is filling periodically, but it's like we have plenty of room at the other three rushes. Right. I agree with Mary Claire, right. but also even further, I, I. It concerns me that if there's not space for transients, and I'm not talking about at the fair, but I mean on a daily basis, because transients deserve to be able to park in those lots too. Right. Right. Well, we're giving them, kind of them the of option. We have five garages, no. so just because yeah, to me just because Pierce is full, they can be they can park at Chester, they can park at Park, they can park at Old Woodward. Right. Again, we have five other garages they can go to, and plenty of meter spots too. But that applies more to the, to me, to the monthly parkers than to the transients who are running in briefly and right. might not know And it's as not much. like your parking pass works at another garage. You know, you, you pay you for can get in. If, if, let's say I, I have a lot six parking pass. Yeah. If lot six is completely full, I can go to another garage and park. I have to use the call button and say, you know. Oh, then they'll let you in? They'll let you in. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. I, I don't know if other, you know. I, I wonder if other, you know, monthly parkers know that. Yes, that you can do that. Yeah. My name is Annie. I'm the facility manager for SP Plus. When the garages are full, the intercoms they do come to the office first. So we are standing by always when the garage is full to answer those intercoms, and we do let anybody know that pulls in. You can go to another garage. This garage has space. This garage has space. Oh, that's great. Yep, okay. and then we stand by for that same caller once they get to that garage to open the gate for them to make that transition very smooth because your pass will not work, that's but yeah. we, like I said, we are standing by. Thank you. No yeah. problem. Does every garage have um, the number of spaces listed on the outside that are available? Yes. Okay. Yes, and they are all working now. Aaron made sure that was part of the installation of the new equipment. They're above so. every entrance to okay. every garage. And so just, if there's two different entrances, it's above the two different entrances. Okay. And just to touch on that over 100% number, that comes into play when Aaron says close the garage to transients. So then we mark that garage as full, but it's still letting monthly parkers in. So that's where that number goes mm -hmm. over. The hundred percent, because we made that garage full with the spaces that he wanted reserved for monthly parkers. Yeah, that's good to know. I mean, yes. that's why it appears you're like, yes. what? Yeah. What made that happen? And you're going, oh, that's an event. Yeah, there's and no you're describing no describing the event. Yes, exactly. That's so good. nobody's waiting to get out. Nobody's the people that are waiting to get in. There is an attendant there, letting them know this is only for monthlies. You can go to this garage. This garage to accommodate the transients as well. That way they do at least have direction. Okay. Have, have we had any response to the increase in Pierce to the $100? Has anyone, is there any pushback? Um, def definitely some complaint, uh, complaints, but not any severity to where they're canceling. We um, did start a log of anybody that called and said, you know, I can't make that change financially. Um, I'd like to cancel. We've only had two people say that. 
um, but we did give them if it because Pierce was such a substantial change we did give them that recommendation of Chester garage is always cheaper so those people I believe actually did move to Chester yep so we still have them <laughs> I've had some people reach out via the city's website or the in the the blast that went out about the change they had my contact information um, did hear back some complaints about the rate but not specifically Pierce more than anybody else and it wasn't anything there wasn't an abundance of complaints that you would say overall then you would expect to hear from somebody's being you know your rates are getting charged whether it's your YouTube TV your phone bill like whenever you raise rates somebody somebody's unhappy right but nothing specifically about Pierce because of the additional rate so so I'm I'm a big fan of these tables and I'm I would I might even go further and say that I would I would like more granularity um, I would be interested to know what does Wednesday look like compared to Saturday right it sure. could be wildly different and you know these are our average numbers which are great but I think you know one of the most important questions is when are we filling up how often are we filling up which garages are filling up um, and even with this level of granularity it's, it can be difficult to tease that out um, so uh, I think that, that that would be useful you know and maybe you can just if we just show one week or an average per hour over you know at what does an average Wednesday look like what does an average Thursday look like um, that would be useful and then I had a, a couple questions so one of the main things I was confused by in this table <clears throat> is in particular transient but also monthly parkers who just seem to be in the garages 100 percent of the time um, like North Old Woodward 1 a.m. you got 113 people uh, you just go throughout the course of the day and then at midnight that same day you got 116 people are there just a, like 113 cars that just live there like what's what's what going on with you, that what page are you on the page numbers at the bottom I left. am on a page uh, 183 in the PDF oh um, okay. I'm looking at the this is the April um, total occupancy by counters table um, I actually don't see a page number on the bottom here. Yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they don't. Right, and, and, and a number of things are like this. Chester has a bunch, and this might make more sense, is Chester has a bunch of monthly parkers, 134 of them. They're just 100% of the time. Um, North Old Woodard has none of those, but has a bunch of these transients. Um, you know, uh, My, Pierce seems to have a mix. There's like 216 monthlies who are there all the time, 118 transients who are there all the time. You know, particularly since that garage is filling up, is something so, weird happening there? Or what? And again, we're trying to establish what is the new, the new norm. And I, mm -hmm. do, I, to your point, I think these you're finding, you're not finding out anything we didn't think about <laughs> sure. as well ourselves. So a lot of our issues, what we have is Sundays is free parking. All the gate arms are up. So on Monday morning at four o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning, the gate arms drop. And essentially, we have to establish what is the new norm in the garage. So there are some cars that are in the garage that we don't know what is the makeup of. So we have to set a baseline that essentially, in the morning, they come through. We have 100 cars in the garage on Sunday morning, or at Monday morning. All right, we have to establish what are the, the makeup of these cars. We don't really know. We're ta ma ta making our best guess. And then once we set that, every car coming in from that point in time, we know what they are. But every Sunday, because we raise gate arms every Sunday for free parking, we're essentially giving, we're, we have to, we're basically resetting the system every week because we're raising gate arms. You know, if we don't want to do that, we could leave the gate arms down on Sundays, still offer free parking, but then everyone has to still scan their badge or pull a ticket, scan their ticket to go out, and you're just kind of wasting paper and making people interact with the, mm -hmm. the equipment for no reason other than saying we want our data to be the most accurate data, data as possible. So a lot of these numbers are probably a little skewed because we say when SB Plus goes through to their accounts on a Monday morning, all right, there's 200 cars in the garage. We don't know if they're transient. We don't know if they're monthly. We just know there's 200 garage, cars in the garage when. So, like, somebody goes in, physically goes into the garage Monday at 4 a.m. when the arms go down, and we're counting. We'll know then. 350 but, cars in Pierce at Monday morning at 4 a.m. 
Correct. Well, mm -hmm. that correct. So we're saying if there are, mm -hmm. then we say, all right, there's 350 cars, but we don't know if they're transient. Yeah, yeah. no, I understand monthly. that we don't know, but but the fact that there are right. 350 people who are just like parking overnight mm -hmm. um, in our busiest structure feels right. um, odd. Right. And then the other question I had is about. Um, in FYI, we're not morning, doing that so. count at 4 o'clock in the morning. We're doing that at 6 or 7 when they're staffed. Sure, but. Them. But at that point, you've counted every car that's come in from four to six, right? So yes, you could just correct, subtract correct. those and figure out how many people are there overnight anyway. Yeah. Um, so another question I had is the um, the Peabody numbers I thought were surprisingly low. Who would agree? Um, mm -hmm. I agree. You know, uh, that's why. I in, in your experience, is it filling up? Is it is it filling up rarely enough that it does in fact average out to? Below eighty percent, even on, or is it because like wait, weekends aren't that busy, but it does regularly fill up on weekdays or something? Yeah, like, and that's where I think to your point, some of these getting diving into more specific, like looking at it a week at a time, um, seeing the days. Because to your point, like here, this is showing you a month average, and yeah. like you said, <clears throat> Saturdays, Sunday, or <clears throat> Fridays, Saturdays, Mondays are drastically different than Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. Sure. So. Um, we have not experienced a drastic difference in Peabody. It is getting close to filling at that 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock window pretty regularly. But again, when you take these monthly averages, it's giving you an average percent. So obviously it's going down because, you know, early morning in the nighttime, it's got plenty of stuff, plenty of availability. Okay. So and then, and then I have one more yeah. question. Um, on the table, the PDF page 185, uh, the transients parking time report. Yep. Um, there's there are these days columns, and six days seems to have a lot of stuff, and there's there's almost nothing in any of the other columns. And I was wondering what what exactly does that mean, and and what's going on here? Why is it all the six day column? a good question. Um, so what this is, kind of, you know, essentially what this report is telling you is, is this is somebody coming in, pulling a ticket, and paying on the way out. <clears throat> so obviously you see the first two hours, this is telling you how long that ticket has stayed parked in your garage. So, okay. as, you know, again, if you look, scroll down, you see average ticket stay, it says hours, like the very Chester, it says 11, <clears throat> 11 hours. So they're saying the average ticket is staying 11 hours in the Chester garage. So it's kind of telling you, okay, we probably have a lot of people that don't have monthly parking that are probably going to work and just paying the fee, right? The average thing. So, you know, you look at the first two hours, there's a lot of, there's a lot of them. That's because we offer two hours free parking, right? A lot of people are probably doing their business, but, you know, this is giving you the average stay. But to your point, yeah, it's like six days seems, seems off. <laughs> Yeah, I don't now know. Now you're, you're getting information off of this data. That's what we're seeing here. That this is great discussion about looking for trends and how to manage more effectively. Sometimes you'll find out that you're collecting it wrong, or there's a, or whatever's happening. But your this discussion is, I think, really, really healthy. Yeah. You know, I think if about, we ran this by day rather than a month, yeah. and getting an average, because that's what's skewing this. It's the average. If we ran it by day, then we would see actual data. Right. But I don't because, think you want yeah, to look at the report by day. <laughs> well, no, no, I mean, a couple of those are there. Yeah. For the, for the uh, committee here, because the average ticket stay at Chester, 11 hours. I mean, that, that just is inaccurate. The average transient is not staying at Chester for 11 hours. Well, if it's just an average and we think there's some number of people who are staying for six days, um, it's not surprising that the average is going to get blown up. Right. So I think the question of, but uh, to your point of, you know, you say the daily data would be useful. There's no daily data that's going to catch somebody who's in the garage for six days if, the, if these people really exist. <laughs> um, so we kind of need to know what's going on here. Um, what what is the what are these people who are in the garages for multiple the days? House, so, right, you know, they live that, across that, the street. That could mm -hmm. Yeah, and some city parkers. Pierce, you've got the hotel. So sure, know. I'm just saying it doesn't seem likely to me that everybody is staying for exactly six days. I mean, we're talking about right. Right. one person that staying that for one day. Monthly report, and you're looking at an average rather than running it for a day and looking. Yeah, at we can run it by days. I mean, that's the good thing. So okay. I mean, I'm. 
I'm still. I, what I didn't want to do, I want. That, but... I guess the purpose of this is, we now know there's additional reports. Hopefully, we're gathering more data. What does everybody want to see now? We can. I can keep pulling different reports, provide them to everybody. Um, we can get more granular, um, and I can show you those. But what I don't want to, what I didn't want to do with this first meeting is say, here's the month of April, day by day, and you have. 50 pages of, of a report that you probably already are like, wow, this is really long. Um, there's a lot of data here before your eyes gloss over. So I guess I'm trying to see what everybody wants to see, and then we can kind of narrow down and start providing those more regularly, whether it's part of this packet, we just send them out to the group you know, regularly so you can peruse at your leisure, but trying to figure out what does everybody here want to see? What is you know what is yeah. piquing your interest. So I think it's going to take some time to do yeah. that, but yeah. what's I think what would be interesting from from my perspective would be your insights. So, but that doesn't have again that doesn't have to happen tonight. Over time, you're looking at all these kind of reports and you're growing and learning and understanding this great new system, and then you're going to get. Like I said, you're going to get data, you're going to get information, you're going to get effective decision making, and there, there'll be insights that you'll see. That's what we're interested. In. You're like, hey, look what I found over a period of time, you know, months, and you're saying, Here, here's what I found in these reports, and you report that back to us. Look, here's what I'm seeing, and it's, it's, and then show them to us too, so because because maybe the the advisory parking committee might develop some insights by reviewing the data as well. But we'd like to see what are you seeing on from the reports and what are your insights? That's what would be interesting to me. Okay. I would like to see maximum granularity, basically. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, because, you know, uh, as we were saying, when, when we take these averages, sometimes funny things fall out. Sure. Um, or things get lost, you know, the fact that Peabody does fill up is kind of lost in the averaging. Whatever's going on with these transient day parkers gets kind of lost in some kind of averaging process. Yeah. Um, and I think we, uh, to, to Jim's point, I think we can figure out what higher level statistics are useful, but I think until we see, you know, and it's like, you know, we got a 150 page, uh, you know, uh, RFP and stuff in this document. Like we yeah, get, know, we get right, big yeah. packets anyway. Yeah. I don't think 20 pages of stats is no, going to I, I blow agree. anybody's just, head up. This was so. the first time showing it to you, so I didn't want to. Yeah, no, I, I understand. And it's it's great stuff. Okay. Giving really a lot of explanation. You you. Get, I can see, see, you can see your eyes glossing over with all the numbers running across. So, you know, I think the intent was just to kind of give you a, an idea of what what some of these are looking yep. like. No, and it's great. Thank you. And uh, and unfortunately. Um, you know, we've tried putting some of these into line graphs, bar graphs, so like you saw the one right there, but the more, the bigger, the bigger time frame we pull, there's so much data there. Putting them into the fancy looking graphs, it, it doesn't, doesn't help. <laughs> it, it, doesn't, it doesn't allow you to read it any better. So when you get down by a day or a week and something like that, some of the, you know, trying to put these into a line or a bar graph, um, it works, but when you start getting into a, like a month at a time, it gets in trying to show, like we try to put it into like showing all the garages or a month over a month, and it's just it's it's too much data. It just makes it look ugly. Perhaps the the um, some people th uh, that are um, develop these reports could also give you some feedback with their clients around the country to say, here's the, here's what we're finding. These are the best reports. And we've already Those submitted a couple of requests for a report on dashboards and additional reports. Yeah. Like, so they, they could probably give you some yeah. some ideas on what what their yep. client's favorite reports Absolutely. are as well. What's the name of that company again? I, I'm sorry. The parking company? Uh, Tiva. Tiva, yeah. So t I think Tiva could, with all their clients around, they'd say, hey, look, here's the ones that everybody likes, or here's the ones they find most useful. But again, our our parking system is unique with Sundays and transients and passes, so every system's probably different, but they could probably give you some, some help on that. And if you scroll down to page 195 in your PDF, 
Um, here's an occupancy with a rolling year, and I think to your point um, about being able to compare, and again, talking about the information. Um, so May 20, or April 23rd, so the first column, it shows you some of these occupancies. This is with the new parking equipment. So I think if you start comparing it to, you know, this is a rolling year, you might say, wait a minute, some of these occupancies look a little lower. Again, this is averaging. This is a we. This is using the reports that we just use. So this is a new form of reporting. So when you compare it to some of the previous months, it's going to look a little different because we're now we're pulling it from a different system. Mm -hmm. We're getting averages. So I think again we got to establish what is the new norm, and do we need to look at it more granular? Do we and then transpose it into a report like this? So then, as we start to drop off the old parking equipment, the old way we used to do it, we kind of now can start to compare it month to month over some of the new data. So while this is, I think this is very good because it allows us to compare on a monthly basis. I don't want to shock everyone and say like, well, why is April so low? Our, you know, our capacities are so much different. Well, you know, we're calculating the data drastically different before we were doing it manually. And, you know, we were taking it at peak periods of, of the day. Now we're taking averages mm -hmm. for the whole month. So. <coughs> um, Do we have anything but that's else on TIVA? No. That's all I have for reports. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Um, next agenda item is meeting open for items not on the agenda. Anybody have anything? Have Richard has something. Uh, so in relation to the uh, increase in the fines for the parking, uh, the BSD uh, thought our recommendation was a little bit too high. So their recommendation, and again, these are all just going to go to the city commission, but they wanted the uh, fines to be after seven tickets instead of going after our five ticket recommendation to go to $100, mm -hmm. their recommendation is after seven tickets, it goes to $50. So that was the big pushback. So that supports your comment that it's <laughs> businesses doing this more than transients. Right. So, and they also said that they would review the process after six months to see if we've had an impact on the behavior of people that are continually parking at the meters and getting in excess of those uh, seven tickets. I don't know which meeting it's getting presented at. Um, obviously, they just had a meeting this past Monday. Um, I'm not sure if it's on the next one or not. But I think their intent is that they're presenting both options to yeah. the commission, and yeah. the commission picks picks what they want or makes their own recommendation. But I don't think they're making a – I don't think they're saying, hey, our recommendation is the APCs or the BSDs. I think they're presenting both, and the commission selects. We'll vote. So. And if I'm not mistaken, did they – did we keep the $175 for the handicap mm -hmm. violation? We yeah. did. Yeah. Okay. I, like again, anybody, didn't seem like anybody pushed back on that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> Any other items? Um, yeah, I have something. Um, the, recently, the commission passed the, uh, the Birmingham plan that has been in the works for a couple of years. I was um, just reviewing it and just for more data for everybody. Um, on 42 of the 90 pages, um, the word parking appears. Um, over in the, in the total report, it's mentioned 285 times, the word parking. Sometimes it's twice in one paragraph, just to clarify things. But I'm just telling you that it's, it's an active issue. Um, and it's 31 times parking is mentioned in the key action section of the report. So that's some more data for you, but it is, it is a prominent topic in the Birmingham plan. And I don't know how this committee wants to, you know, evaluate that but in, in how we should possibly dig into it further and see what these key, you know, start with the key actions and work along. But I just wanted to 
make that make that notable to everybody. That's super that's great helpful. Notable. I'm sorry. That's super helpful information. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Do you have any examples of what you think that uh, would I mean, be a lot of them are? Yeah, you got to go through and look yeah. at the use case because a lot of them are residential neighborhoods. I mean, you have to kind of narrow down to what the what what specifically they're talking about. You'd have to read the report, but like I said, you, you, if you just went to key mm -hmm. key actions, mm -hmm. it's the word. I, and I just did a word search, but it's Parkins mentioned 31 times just in key actions, and like I said, 285 times throughout the whole report. Right. And it's basically on every other page. I mean, if it's right, but again, you, you I got to look at the context. It's right. Easy. I know you got to look yeah. at the context, but it's it's mentioned it's in there. Prevalent. Yeah. I just have one other question. Yeah. Have, has there been any malfunctions in the new equipment, like paper running out or just any issues? I mean, it, yes, I don't even say they're malfunctions. I mean, yes, the paper does run out. I mean, and that's the good thing as part of, that was the perks of the new equipment. So we get notifications when it's running low on paper so you can replace it before it runs out. If it runs out, it still defaults to charging people a credit card. So you're not telling people they can't enter. So like previously, remember the, our old system, you had to enter via credit card. Well, if the new machine runs out of paper, you can still tap or insert your credit card to get in and act as a virtual ticket, which they can do anyway. You don't have to take a ticket to get in. So, um, you know, somebody hits the gate arm, the gate arm breaks, we get notifications alerting us that, hey, your gate, somebody's hit your gate, go take a look at it to, to fix it. So, um, you know. Those emails automatic to you or something like that? Yeah, they go happens? to anybody yeah. who wants them. So, yeah. I mean, this, so it allows the team to to, I guess, you know, resolve the issue in real time versus getting a phone call or just randomly seeing it, which was kind of the case before. The equipment didn't talk to us, so. But I wouldn't term it as a malfunction, per se. But, yeah, I maybe mean, they run out of tickets and people hit the gate arms at all times of day. <laughs> but it's been, the it's been a good experience. I I'll What's default the it down, but I would say so far I think it's been a, it's been a positive positive experience great what's the cause of gate arm people hitting gate arms mostly Is well cell phones or well most oh the cause yeah it depends on what garage really <laughs> most of it's intentional intentional oh my oh, yeah. goodness really wow oh. so at north old woodward you actually um that if you come in off of Bates, that entry lane if you come into that garage, a lot of people try to make that right, but you cannot make a right turn there without readjusting your vehicle. And they back And when the they gate. back, they back up, they back into the gate arm. So, do you think that so they're not doing that intentionally? They just no. are trying to make a turn they can't. But you'll have people in the odd hours of the day that they either purposely lift the gate arm yes. or to try to get out, or they drive through it so they don't mm. have to pay. What about it coming down quicker oh. than they anticipate? What's that? Well, what happened to me on the Chicago Thruway was the arm came down as I was driving through. Oh. So. It, they, they have sensors for your vehicle, so your the gate arm should not go down, ideally, mm -hmm. until your car has been moved from that weight. So that's good. That. And if it goes, if you ha happen to have to back up before you pull forward, someone drops their credit card or something mm -hmm. like that. They, they usually just hit the intercom and say, the gate went down, mm -hmm. can you let me out? And we can see that transaction already went through. So, so on this, this backing up issue, could you do something to stop people from doing that? Yes, we have, it? we have a couple stacker cones like placed right there, but the problem is they're movable they run over the stack yeah so i mean what really needs to happen is is we need to extend the curb out okay to make it so like if you make that right hand turn you're you're essentially driving up on the curb right. or you got to put a permanent like bollard there which we are looking at the cost of good okay doing the bollard yeah so you're looking into yeah that. Right. so that one i wouldn't say is intentional to her point she's like they're intentionally making the right hand turn but they're not intentionally in the gate arm they're readjusting and then they back into it yeah and, but, but but it's a situation that can occur that yeah. you're trying to alleviate 
in the future. Good. Exactly. Good. When when are SP plus staff there? What are your hours? Uh, we have someone here. The only time we don't have someone here is between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. And you do have someone on the weekend? Yes. Cool. I wanted to add, too, that um, prior to the meeting, Erin and I discussed um, a recommendation to the multimodal board um, to install a crosswalk across from the Old Woodward garage so that um, parkers who park there can safely cross the street. Yes. Um, I think it's, it's a significant hazard. So, um, you know, I think it is somewhat related to it's, it's somewhat of a parking problem. But um, so Aaron's going to make a recommendation to the multimodal board that they install a crossing there. North Old Woodward garage? Yeah, the North okay. Old Woodward garage, yeah. That's a big problem. It is a big problem because there's no way people don't go up to the intersection and cross or go all the way down to, you know, um, the crosswalk that's, yeah. you know, that's the way I drive home, and there's I always stop yeah. for everybody walking because oh, it's yeah. very scary, especially with that construction. It's yeah, especially with the construction, it's really scary. So I think a crosswalk, you know, not necessarily stopping traffic, but a crosswalk that alerts people that people will be crossing there is, you know, absolutely necessary. So I have one more Please. thing. So. Um, also at the, the uh, many times referenced May 22nd uh, City Commission meeting, um, I believe they moved to hold a joint workshop with the Advisory Parking Committee. I don't think any date has been set, um, but I think it might behoove us uh, before this happened to just kind of do some high level overview of things. Um, and I think it might be a good idea um, in particular to maybe over, over at the next meeting or over the course of the next couple of meetings review the 2018 parking report that we had done you know it was it was a different world um, maybe some of the stuff is still useful maybe some of it is total nonsense now um, but I think that might be a good place to start and we can kind of try to compile uh, some questions as well what kinds of high-level things I know that some of the commissioners were talking about you know, we're putting all this money into the garages. How long are these garages going to last? You hear these horror stories about collapsing parking garages, and ours are old. Um, I was looking online. I feel like I heard numbers anywhere from 30 years to 50 years plus for the lifetime of a parking garage. North Old Woodward is WJ. pushing 60 years, right? I have talked to WJE about this because many commissioners have already brought this up. Yeah. Um, so I specifically asked the question, one, about the the age and support of the garages because of what happened in New York. It was obviously top of mind. And then there's a lot of concerns with EV cars because they're, they're significantly heavier in weight. Um, they have reassured me, that one, that all five of our garages are very structurally sound. Um, and that two, they, because of their age actually is a benefit because the way they built the parking garages back then they don't build them now, so they actually are supporting more weight than what garages they build nowadays mm -hmm. are even close to supporting. Um, so actually, the EV cars and the and the weight limits, they actually were way beyond. I can get the specific numbers that they spoke to, but they reassured me that, you know, with a quick high level, you're asking me this question, I'm giving you this answer. Your garages are very structural sound, and they actually support way more weight load than any new garage does because now they, you know, they're they're cutting corner, not cutting corners, but they're very um, efficient in how they build parking garages nowadays. Mm -hmm. So, and essentially, you would equate it to your metaphor would be like they don't build cars like they did back in the '60s and the '50s. You know, these big hunky machines that are, yeah. you basically are tanks. Well, that's the way our garages are apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, but but even even aside from you know. Yeah. The, the parking garage collapses. Uh, I, I mean, it obviously happens in some places, but you know, it might be a little bit of a boogeyman for us. Um, but even just the question of we're we're laying out how many millions of dollars in maintenance, right? The fund only has so much money in it. What happens if we run out of money? How confident are we that over the next ten years we'll have enough money in the fund to cover all the maintenance and stuff? You know, these are questions that you know we look at monthly and maybe even annual revenue numbers every once in a while. But looking at this kind of long-term financial stuff, I think, you know, uh, I, I don't know that information. Maybe it's, maybe it's just uh, being a newbie, but um, I think it would probably be good in the, in the post-COVID world uh, to take another look at these things, especially if we're going to be uh, 
put in front of the city commission and they're going to be asking us about all this stuff, um, I think it would be, be good for us to have an answer. Um, so in particular, I was, I was planning on, I think I'm going to make a motion to um, add an item to next month's agenda to discuss the 2018 parking plan. I'll second. Hi. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. Aaron, do you think you can throw a cup? Well, mm -hmm. I don't know how long it is, the 2018 parking plan, but can you put that in the agenda? I can. And it's also it's on our yeah, website. I was going to say you probably want to look at it ahead of time, yeah. um, but it is on the city's website on the yeah, parking of page. Yeah, of course. But just as a but yes, I can. to have yeah <clears throat> while we're sitting up here. Yep. Anybody else have anything? All, all, all good stuff. I just want to speak to our meeting. I won't be able to be here on July twelfth, unfortunately. I'm also not available August second. Or, yeah, second is the Wednesday. Um, I'm having you said August second? Yeah. I'm having a procedure, so I'm not available on the ninth either. Um, so I'm just mentioning that because summers are often low and we want to have a quorum, so. Okay. We're not having a July meeting? We are. It's July 12th. It is. It's July 12th. 12th. I just oh, said okay. I couldn't okay. make it. <clears throat> but we need five people. Correct. Yeah. Anybody else? Good. Mm -hmm. I think we're good? Yep. All right. Meeting adjourned.